Hi guys, we're here for a Bible in a Year challenge reading for December 21st, and that's going to be read from Zephaniah, the whole book, Proverbs 28, and Matthew 18. Okay, so Zephaniah has three chapters. Okay, chapter one. The Lord gave these messages to Zephaniah when Josiah, son of Ammon, was king of Judah. Zephaniah was the son of Cushi, son of... Gedaliah, son of Amariah, son of Hezekiah. Coming judgment against Judah. I will sweep away everything in all your land, says the Lord. I will sweep away both people and, and animals alike. Even the birds of the air and the fish in the sea will die. I will reduce the wicked to heaps of rubble, along with the rest of humanity, says the Lord. I will crush Judah and Jerusalem with my fist and destroy every last trace of their Baal worship. I will put an end to all the idolatrous priests so that even the memory of them will disappear. For they go up to their roofs and bow to the sun, moon, and stars. They claim to follow the Lord, but then they worship Moloch too. So now I will destroy them. And I will destroy those who used to worship me, but now no longer do. They no longer ask for the Lord's guidance or seek my blessings. Stand in silence in the presence of the sovereign Lord. For the awesome day of the Lord's judgment has come. The Lord has prepared his people for a great slaughter and has chosen their executioners. On that day of judgment, says the Lord, I will punish the leaders and princes of Judah and all those following pagan customs. Yes, I will punish those who participate in pagan worship ceremonies and those who steal and kill to fill their master's homes with loot. On that day, says the Lord, a cry of alarm will come from the fish gate and echo throughout the newer Mishnah section of the city. And a great crash sound will come from the surrounding hills. Wail in sorrow, all you who live in the market area, for all who buy and sell there will die. I will search with lanterns in Jerusalem's darkest corners to find and punish those who sit contended in their sins, indifferent to the Lord, thinking he will do nothing at all to them. They are the very ones whose property will be plundered by the enemy, whose homes will be ransacked. ransacked. They will never have a chance to live in the new homes they have built. They will never drink wine from the vineyards they have planted. That terrible day of the Lord is near. Swiftly it comes, a day when strong men will cry bitterly. It is a day when the Lord's anger will be poured out. It is a day of terrible distress and anguish, a day of ruin and desolation, a day of darkness and gloom, of clouds, blackness, trumpet calls, and battle cries. Down go the walls, the walled cities and strongest battlements. Because you have sinned against the Lord, I will make you as helpless as a blind man searching for a path. Your blood will be poured out into the dust and your bodies will lie there rotting on the ground. Your silver and gold will be of no use to you on that day of the Lord's anger, for the whole land will be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. He'll make a terrifying end of all the people on earth. Chapter 2, A Call to Repentance Gather together and pray, you shameless nation. Gather while there is still time, before judgment begins and your opportunity is blown away like chaff. Act now before the fierce fury of the Lord falls and the terrible day of the Lord's anger begins. Beg the Lord to save you. All you who are humble, all you who uphold justice, walk humbly and do what is right. Perhaps even yet the Lord will protect you from his anger on that day of destruction. Judgment against Philistia. Gaza, Ashkelon, Ashdod, Ekron. These Philistine cities too will be rooted out and left in desolation. And how terrible it will be for you Philistines who live along the coast and in the land of Canaan. For this judgment is against you too. The Lord will destroy you until not one of you is left. The coastal area will become a pasture, a place of shepherd camps and enclosures for sheep. The few survivors of the tribe of Judah will pasture there. They will lie down to rest in the abandoned houses in Ashkelon. For the Lord their God will visit his people in kindness and restore their prosperity again. Judgment against Moab and Ammon. I have heard the taunts of the people of Moab and Ammon, mocking my people and invading their borders. Now as surely as I live, says the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, Moab and Ammon will be destroyed as completely as Saddam and Gomorrah. Their land will become a place of stinging nettles, salt pits, and eternal desolation. Those of my people who are left will plunder them and take their land. They will receive the wages of their pride, for they have scoffed at the people of the Lord Almighty. The Lord will terrify them as he destroys all the gods in the land. Then people from nations around the world will worship the Lord, each in their own land. Judgment against Ethiopia and Assyria. You Ethiopians will also be slaughtered by my sword, says the Lord. And the Lord will strike the lands of the north with his fist. He will destroy Assyria and make its great capital, Nineveh, a desolate wasteland, parched like a desert. The city that once was so proud will become a pasture for sheep and cattle. All sorts of wild animals will settle there. 
Owls of many kinds will live among the ruins of its palaces, hooting from the gaping windows. Rubble will block all the doorways, and the cedar paneling will lie open to the wind and weather. This is the fate of that boisterous city, once so secure. In all the world there is no city as great as I, it boasted. But now, look how, look, it has become an utter room, a place where animals live. Everyone passing that way will laugh in derision or shake a defiant fist. Chapter 3. Jerusalem's Jerusalem's Rebellion and Redemption How terrible it will be for rebellious, polluted Jerusalem, the city of violence and crime. It proudly refuses to listen, even to the voice of the Lord. No one can tell it anything. It refuses all correction. It does not trust in the Lord or draw near to its God. Its leaders are like roaring lions, hunting for their victims, out for everything they can get. Its judges are like ravenous wolves at evening time, who by dawn have left no trace of their prey. Its prophets are arrogant liars, seeking their own gain. Its priests defile the temple by disobeying God's laws. But the Lord is still there in the city, and he does no wrong. Day by day his justice is more evident, but no one takes notice. The wicked know no shame. I have wiped out many nations, devastating their fortresses, devastating their fortress walls and towers. Their cities are now deserted. Their streets are in silent ruin. There are no survivors to even tell what happened. I thought surely they will have reverence for me now. Surely they'll listen to my warning, so I won't need to strike again. But no. However much I punish them, they continue their evil practices from dawn till dusk and dusk till dawn. So now the Lord says, be patient. The time is coming soon and I will stand up and accuse these evil nations. For it is my decision to gather together the kingdoms of the earth and pour out my fiercest anger and fury on them. All the earth will be devoured by the fire of my jealousy. On that day, I will purify the lips of all people so that everyone will be able to worship the Lord together. My scattered people who live beyond the rivers of Ethiopia will come to present their offerings. And then you will no longer need to be ashamed of yourselves, for you will no longer be rebels against me. I will remove all the proud and arrogant people from among you. There will be no pride on my holy mountain. Those who are left will be the lowly and the humble, for it is they who trust in the name of the Lord. The people of Israel who survive will do no wrong to each other, never telling lies or deceiving one another. They will live peaceful lives, lying down to sleep in safety. There will be no one to make them afraid. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. For the Lord will remove his hand of judgment and will disperse the armies of your enemy. And the Lord himself, the King of Israel, will live among you. At last your troubles will be over and you will fear disaster no more. On that day, the announcement to Jerusalem will be, Cheer up, Zion. Don't be afraid. For the Lord your God has arrived to live among you. He is a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with great gladness. With his love, he will calm all your fears. He will ex exult over you by singing a happy song. I will gather you who mourn for the appointed festivals. You will be disgraced no more. And I will de deal severely with all who have oppressed you. I will save the weak and helpless ones. I will bring together those who are chased away. I will give glory and renown to my former exiles who have been mocked and shamed. On that day, I will gather you together and bring you home again. I will give you a good name, a name of distinction among all the nations of the earth. They will praise you as I restore your fortunes before their very eyes. I, the Lord, have spoken. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28. The wicked run away. When no one is chasing them, but the godly are as bold as lions. When there is mortal rot within a nation, its government topples easily. But with wise and knowledgeable leaders, there is stability. A poor person who oppresses the poor is like a pounding rain that destroys the crops. To reject the law is to praise the wicked. To obey the law is to fight them. Evil people don't understand justice, but those who follow the Lord understand completely. It is better to be poor and honest than rich and crooked. Young people who obey the law are wise. Those who seek out worthless companions bring shame to their parents. A person who makes money by charging interest will lose it. It will end up in the hands of someone who is kind to the poor. The prayers of a person who ignores the law are despised. Those who lead the upright into sin will fall into their own trap, but the honest will inherit good things. Rich people picture themselves as wise, but their real poverty is evident to the poor. When the godly succeed, everyone is glad. When the wicked take charge, people go into hiding. 
People who cover over their sins will not prosper, but if they confess and forsake them, they will receive mercy. Blessed are those who have a tender conscience, but the stubborn are headed for serious trouble. A wicked ruler is as dangerous to the poor as a lion or bear attacking them. Only a stupid prince will oppress his people, but a king will have a long reign if he hates dishonesty and bribes. A murderer's tormented conscience will drive him into the grave. Don't protect him. The honest will be rescued from harm, but those who are crooked will be destroyed. Hard workers have plenty of food. Playing around brings poverty. The trustworthy will get a rich reward, but the person who wants to get rich quick will only get into trouble. Showing partiality is never good, yet some will do wrong for something as small as a piece of bread. A greedy person tries to get rich quick, but it only leads to poverty. In the end, people appreciate frankness more than flattery. Robbing your parents and then saying, what's wrong with that, is as serious as committing murder. Greed causes fighting. Trusting the Lord leads to prosperity. Trusting oneself is foolish, but those who walk in wisdom are safe. Whoever gives to the poor will lack nothing, but a curse will come upon those who close their eyes to poverty. When the wicked take charge, people hide. When the wicked meet disaster, the godly multiply. Okay, in Matthew chapter 18... The greatest in the kingdom. About that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Which of us is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a small, child, a small child over to him and put the child among them. Then he said, I assure you, unless you turn from your sins and become as little children, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, anyone who becomes as humble as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf is welcoming me. But if anyone causes one of these little ones who trusted me to lose faith, it would be better for that person to be thrown into the sea with a large millstone tied around the neck. How terrible it will be for anyone who causes, causes others to sin. Tempta temptation to do wrong is inevitable, but how terrible it will be for the person who does the tempting. So if your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better to enter heaven crippled or lame than to be thrown into the unquenchable fire with both of your hands and feet. And if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better to enter heaven half blind than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell. Beware that you don't despise a single one of these little ones, for I tell you that in heaven their angels are always in the presence of my heavenly Father. Story of the Lost Sheep If a shepherd has 100 sheep and one wanders away and is lost, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others and go out to the hills to search for the lost one? And if he finds it, he will surely rejoice over it more than over the 99 that didn't wander away. In the same way, it is not my Heavenly Father's will that even one of these little ones should perish. Correcting a fellow believer. If another believer sins against you, go privately and point out the fault. If the other person listens and confesses it, you will have won that person back. But if you are unsuccessful, take one or two others with you and go back again, so that everything you say may be confirmed by two or three witnesses. If that person still refuses to listen, take your case to the church. If the church decides you are right, but the other person won't accept it, treat that person as a pagan or a corrupt tax collector. I tell you this, whatever you prohibit on earth is prohibited in heaven, and whatever you allow on earth is allowed in heaven. I also tell you this, if two of you agree down here on earth concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three gather together because they are mine, I am there among them. Story of the unforgiving debtor. Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, Jesus replied, 70 times seven. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with the servants who had borrowed money from him. In the process, one of his debtors was brought in who owed him millions of dollars. He couldn't pay, so the king ordered that his wife, his children, and everything he had be sold to pay the debt. But the man fell down before the king and begged him, Oh, sir, be patient with me, and I will pay it all. Then the king was filled with pity for him, and he released him and forgave his debt. But when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. He grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment. 
His fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a little more time. Be patient and I will pay it, he pleaded, but his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and jailed until the debt could be paid in full. When some of the other servants saw this, they were very upset. They went to the king and told him what had happened. Then the king called in the man he had forgiven and said, You evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? Then the angry king sent the man to prison until he had paid every penny. That's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters in your heart. I just realized too that this is our second time reading through the book of Matthew. We actually read through the book of Matthew in January. Okay, that is all for today's reading. We'll see you tomorrow.